All right, welcome to lesson five where we're gonna set up this custom accent color that will update the accent color throughout the site. Now, if you've gotten stuck at any point, remember you can always go into the code, grab the lesson from the right branch, and then download that and get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do is first of all, go ahead and grab this field set for the radio wrapper right here. We're gonna duplicate it down with Option, Shift, and the down arrow. And now we'll just update this to read custom accent. And then I'm gonna update each of these themes here. We're gonna call this custom color. I also want to name this right here, uh, option one. I'll copy this and this will be option two. And finally, this will be option three. So if I come back over to the actual site we're working on, option one, option two, option three. Now I actually need to update these IDs as well. So the ID is I want to correspond to my variables. So if I jump back over this way, we set up these colors of background text, back, primary accent one and accent two. So these are the IDs right here, the primary accent one and accent two. If I jump back over this way, this one will be my primary option. So I'm gonna select primary up here and down here with the command D. So grab this one and then hit command D. This one will be accent one and same thing here, accent two. So I can actually update what I need based on the ID itself. And again, these are the same so that they point to each other. So if I select on this, we're good. Select on this, we're good. Now, next, what I wanna do is handle the JavaScript. If I come over this way, right now what's happening is I'm adding a data color custom to, or custom color to my head. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna handle this a little bit differently. So let's jump over to the JavaScript and all of this is being handled right here. Now, it's right now it's passing a name and a value, which is an ID all the way up here. However, because I wanna handle this a little bit differently, I need to check to see basically if it's a custom color or not. So in this case, what I'm gonna do, I can do this in a couple of different ways. I can either name all the ones that come up top here, or I can just name this single one, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. By naming, I mean I need to select the name. So if the name happens to be custom color, so that's just the one we just set up here, Instead of doing this right here where I take the doc and I update the data set and I give it a new data value, instead what I want to do is I want to update the actual custom property that we're going to set up. So let's first of all type this out and then we'll update the CSS. So what I want to do is return. So that means it won't ever hit this right here if it's the custom color. It'll just return straight out of this function by taking the document. That's this right here. We're going to update the style. We're going to set the property. And in this case, I want to set my custom variable of custom color, which we'll set up in a second, to, in this case, I need this to be dynamic because I don't know what the value is going to be. So I'm going to say var, and this is going to be my value. Okay, so if that doesn't make sense, I'll explain it here once we add something in our CSS. All I'm doing is basically updating the custom color variable we're going to add to whatever this is, which would be primary or accent one or accent two. So if I jump back over this way, we're gonna go up here inside the root. We're gonna add a custom property called custom color. Now notice once again that all these colors right here are being declared on whatever it is, light or dark mode. Right below here, what I wanna do is add that custom variable. We're gonna add this as custom color. We're gonna set a default value. In this case, I want it to be var accent two. And just to make sure it's clear what we're doing here, we're gonna add like custom color selection or something like that. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna use this custom color and point it to another variable. In this case, it'd be accent two or accent three. And as this changes, whether it's dark mode or light mode or whatever, this will update for me automatically. Now, right now, because we just added this custom variable, nothing is pointing to this. So if I come over here and I start selecting things, it will actually update that style property of custom color to my var accent, uh, whatever this happens to be. Now, it's hard to see because I've got this accessibility tree thing up. Um, but if I, I guess I have to pull out this way some, accent one is now what it says, uh, accent two, this would be primary. So you can see it's actually accessing these variables right here, which is what I want. However, because I'm not using custom color anywhere, it's not updating anywhere yet. So what I want to do is come over here and down inside my normal CSS. So once I get down into here, I'm going to just find my first uh, accent two. Okay, that looks to be this right here. I wanna update all of these var accent twos. If I hit command D, I'm just gonna slowly loop through all of these. And you can see that it's actually telling me how many I have left over this way. So just a couple left. I think that might be it so far. Okay, so I'm gonna update all of these at the same exact time to var custom color. And normally you would actually have these on specific things, but for now, they're all updated to that. So if I come over here and I pull this down some, you're gonna see this right here is actually using that new custom color property. So if I change this to two, it should change all those to two, three, all those to three. So I'm actually overwriting a style property now, not using a data variable, which I could have also done it that way. I just wanted to show you a couple different ways to use these variables to do theming. In this case, I'm just gonna update the style property where I update a single 
variable and then use that throughout the document. Okay, so to walk that through real quick one more time, if I come back over here, we've set up a second field set. This field set, all of these things have custom color of uh, as their name, which means these are all single select. You can only select one of these. They've got the primary or the accent one or accent two. Those correspond to our variable names, which we set up up top here for our colors, primary accent one and accent two. In the JavaScript, when I update the site UI, I first check, hey, is this the name of custom color? If it is, then I update the style property of this CSS variable right here. I update it to var whatever the color happens to be, primary, accent one, or accent two. That declares this on the entire HTML. And if I jump over to my CSS, since I've gone ahead right here and added this custom color and by default pointed it to accent two, now you can see all throughout the site, it's using whenever I use custom color, custom color right here, it's gonna be using this color all throughout there and it's pointing to another variable by default, accent two. However, I can change that right here and when I do it updates the color all throughout the site. So we've set up now the motion, the rounding, the theme, and the accent. Finally, I wanna look at the audio setting. And I saved this for the end just so we didn't have to hear it toggling one way or the other the entire time. So let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson.